is a queer thing, Susan. All we know about it for certain is that it's bound to change. Like styles for women, John. You, you didn't tell me whether you liked my cloak. Never worn anything more becoming. But you shouldn't have come along. I suspect it has made them feel uncomfortable. But you understand. We're passing up a lot of tree limbs, Sheriff. And cheat red goats out of a hanging? No. We promised we'll take him back. Well, at least we can hurry before night comes on us. And have his wife's death, or maybe worse, on our heads. No. She's in no condition for galloping. That's ten thousand yomi, Kento. Put it down. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tuttle, there's a woman outside. She's drunk. Hmm. Probably one of the girls in Poker Flat. Someone chased her out. We don't want their leave-ins. Tell her to move on. Maybe I'd better tell her to go. Huh? That's right, Davy. If there were a dozen women outside, we might be interested. But only one? That just spells trouble. I'll go take a look. You play your hand. I'll give her the boot. Oh, what does she want here? Hey, we don't want you here. Move on. Oh. Why, what's the matter? James! 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 We're about to become a father. What? Meaning just what? That woman out there. Be with Hey, give the critter to me before you drop her. Take her over to you for bills. This ain't no hospital. Neither's my shack. Oh. She has to have a bed. Well, it ain't no hotel, nother. Take her away. How about the faro table? Well, that's it. Sure. Kate, Would a 
appear to me, Sandy, this poor mother is dying. to my baby gentleman and he may bring you luck mr camp could stand something or other of course madam but what is your name doesn't make any difference what camp do you come from who is the child's father About all we can do for. Yeah, that's yes, right. Thank you. Shame she had to die. I wonder who she was. The kid must think he's a minister. He should remind us, gentlemen that we've drifted a long ways from the refining influence of a woman. <laughs> Mighty small specimen, I calls it. sure did a mighty fine job of building this crib, didn't he, Bill? Mm -hmm. uh, where is the boy? Down to my store, trying to round up something to feed this little critter. Well, you ain't got nothing down there to feed this little cuss. <laughs> oh, look, look! He's <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing? He's a wrestling with my fingers. I got some cornmeal over in my shack. <laughs> fine thought, Yuba. Why not add a little jerk beef and sourdough? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, take it easy, fellas. I don't know nothing about no baby. You can't feed a baby on cornmeal, Yuba. This little fellow's got to have milk. Yeah, that's right, but where are you going to get it? Gall darned if I know. Hmm. You, Sandy? Me, milk. Well, I, I ain't seen no milk since I was a baby. <laughs> Hey, fellows, look. What? Gentlemen, there's milk. Oh, who ever heard of feeding a baby jackass milk? Why not? They're both babies. Ain't there nothing sacred in this camp? Who ever heard of a jackass mother and a baby? And Romulus and Remus were nursed by a wolf. Romulus, Remus. Judge, what kind of book nonsense is that? An ancient legend. They were twin babies and the founders of Rome. Guess it ain't gonna be much different than milking a cow. Give me a hat, can you? Oh, you don't get my hat. By gum, that'll do. How's that? Come on, men, let's go get it. <laughs> Well, I'll be doggoned. <laughs> Careful now, you'll be liable to kick you. Give me the bottle, Judge. There you are. I right. hold ahead. I'm All right. little one. Now, don't let her kick me. <laughs> <laughs> Cute little cuss, ain't it? Sure is. Turn it loose, Judge. Oh. I got enough. <laughs> Look at that. Go back, little fella. That'll feed him. <laughs> yes, yes that ought to be enough. Here, yeah, boys. Here's your milk. Here you are, Judge. Well, what's the matter? Uh, how are we going to get it in him? Hold his mouth open and pour it in. You can't do that. You'll choke him to death. Hey, I know what to do. Hey, Why, are you crazy galoo? That's the only pair of gloves in Roaring Camp. Well, the baby's got to eat, don't it? Here you are, Judge. I think that's going to work. <clears throat> now, nah, Judge, you ain't steady enough for nursing. Hold your hands out. 
You're it, Tuttle. Me the bottle. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. Look at him, look at him. <laughs> Don't board so fast, Tuttle. <laughs> He's old timer, ain't he? <laughs> You sure can take it, can't it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> take it. Don't give it to him too fast. It's my pleasure to announce the little stranger is now having his dinner. <laughs> well, I'm in the razor, Tuttle. Where's it at? You will have to ask Yuba for your razor. His corns are hurting him off. <laughs> the point is. What are we going to do with a little cuss? Hmm. Yeah, well, I... I propose that Roaring Camp adopt this sweet little orphan as a partner to share equally with all of us. I'm for it. Yes. Bring him inside, Davy. Shh. He's asleep. Careful. He ain't he little. Maybe after all, this infant should have a woman's care. Send him over to Red Dog. It's only 40 miles and they got women over there. Oh, them fellas at Red Dog would swap it and ring in somebody else. Oh, they're a bunch of crooks and thieves. What do you say, Judge? Me and the jackass have been father and mother to this baby. <laughs> And I reckon we can take care of him. <laughs> With the help of Sandy and me. And Davy. Davy's been right kind and gentle, too. Davy's got more horse sense than all of us put together. Davy, we're electing you official custodian to this infant. What do you say? No more chores around here. No more cleaning up for your victuals. He's elected. Speech. Come on, David, say something. Doesn't seem to be much for me to say, except I like the little fella. I'll do my best for him. <laughs> he wrestled with it, the little cuss. So I proclaim you Thomas Luck, according to the laws of California. So help me. Amen. Hello, Thomas. <laughs> Let me hold a little pal. Careful now. <laughs> And it looks like we're losing our pack. Can you imagine them galoots adopting a baby, sir? <laughs> Why, I never heard of such a thing. Scavengers, we'll meet here for you. <laughs> you ain't gonna pick my bones, you ornery critter. Oh, 
Been wondering what became of you, single tooth. Been wondering myself. I broke my leg ages ago. Didn't want to get eaten alive by the coyotes. So I dug in. Digging a grave for yourself is about the only time you ever done your work in your life. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Guess if the boys took a vote, they'd say leave you here. Personally, I got some more prospecting to do in the North Fork. D don't, don't leave me, Stumpy. Get me out of here. I, I'll make you part in this hole. Just looks like the rest of you. All dirt. Oh, it's, it's got color. It, it's got color. Look, see? Gosh. <laughs> well, that's a good... Stumpy started rich! What? Gold! I tell you, he did! Gold! Gold. I tell you, I found it! Where's the street? Tell us, where did you find it? On top! Where? On top of... Where are you? Rio! 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 Come on, Stumpy! Looks like we found it at last! Come and get it, Judge! Can't wait, Davy, my boy. What's up? Big strike over in Mineral Gulch. Come on! Looks like Roaring Camp's gonna amount to something after all. Hurry up! I'll wait till I get my horse and I'll be right with you. Say, Judge, don't yeah. forget about luck. You know, I'll stake a claim. Sure we will. We well, don't forget. So long, Sandy. So long, Davy. to decide whether you are just a cautious player or waiting your chance to suck me in. Judge, our acquaintance ripens. 
you'll know that I would gladly cut your throat for the case ace. Your frankness stamps she was an honest gentleman. What? Two. That? One to you. I'll play these. Oh, yeah. Aces full of kings. to intrude, but I'm looking for a room to rent. Afraid I can't help you very much. Well, I'm willing to pay a good price, even for a bed, until I can get located. Oh, did you try Mr. Tuttle down at the hall? Yes, I tried him. Good night. Thanks. Oh, miss. Just a minute. How much would you pay for a room? Oh, I might go three dollars a day. Why don't you ask your mother? Oh, there's nobody here. Just luck. That's the baby in me. Well, that's none of my business. Is it a deal? Come in. Place is a little rough. Did you say a little? I could get a curtain from somewhere and hang it. There's a bunk there. Judge Brandt doesn't use it anymore. And I'll be glad to let you have my pillow. Who's Judge Brad? Oh, he's one of the godfathers to the luck. You see, this shack really belongs to him, but... Well, since the gold strike, he and some of the other fellows have built themselves a bigger shack up near the diggings. Oh, I see. And so they left you behind to play nursemaid. You might call me that. <laughs> this is dandy. Do you think it'll do, then? It'll have to. It's pretty late to start back to New Orleans now. Besides, I'm working tonight. Do you mind? No, I'll, I'll go outside. Hello, my bon ami. Comment ça va, mon cher? Will you go get with me? Why won't you take a dare? Your eyes keep saying yes, mais je ne sais pas pourquoi. Chérie, you never guess what fun we could have a lot. Have voici
Give me that fella. Yeah, I want him. Let me see him. Let's have a look at him. Oh, he's a daisy. Uh -huh. Idiot, idiot, right. idiot, daisy, huh? Boy, has he grown. Yes, sir. Young fella, are they taking good care of you, huh? Ah, <laughs> uh, Davy, we're awfully busy up here. What's on your mind? Well, you see, the luck and I have taken in a rumor, and I thought I'd better come up and tell you fellas about it. Rumor? What sort of a rumor? Well, her name's Elsie. It's a woman. See, the rest of the camps were pretty crowded, and we thought... You thought what? She's all right. She's paying three dollars a day. Get rid of her. Listen, Yuba. You fellas haven't done much worrying about the luck lately. We can use that three dollars. Listen, you get a swift boot if you don't do what we say. Easy, Sandy. He was hired to tend the luck. Not exactly hired, Sandy. Well, what in thunderation was you? Elected. When a fellow's hired, he usually gets paid for what he does. Oh, take it easy, Davy. Your paydays are coming real soon. We're busy now. We'll see you later. Here's the boy. Here he is. Ah, ah there you are. Goodbye there, Thomas. Uh -huh. Do you have any luck finding a permanent place to live? I like it here all right. You're satisfied? Oh, I'm satisfied. I think the luck likes it, too. Say you say, young fellow. What's on your mind? Well... Sandy and Kentuck and some of the fellas, they don't exactly approve of the arrangement. Just which one of you two babies are they afraid I'll contaminate? Oh, it isn't that. Really. You don't have to leave. I somehow got the impression you could use a little extra money around here. I can get along with anything. It's the baby. I kind of thought I'd like to send away and get a store crib for him. I see. I thought his godfathers were doing pretty well up at the sluice boxes. <laughs> at least business is certainly rushing over at Tuttle's Hall. I don't know anything about babies. But I know if he were mine, I wouldn't send away for a crib. I'd take him away. familiar. Mister, I never was in Red Gulch. Andy, gentlemen. Judge, may I speak to you, ma'am? Davey, my lad, stand over there with Mr. Olson. He needs some bad luck. What's on your mind? It's about luck. Yeah, this will hold it. We'll be dropping in on you tomorrow. I'm cashing in, gentlemen. Fine time to quit. When you got me skinned to the bone. Pleasant evening, pleasant game, interesting village. Only some of the citizens are a trifle clumsy. They should grow up. Well, I stopped trying to ring in an extra ace when I was 10 years old. Grand you come in, solid me! And you have shooting to do, Kentucky. Do it outside, you'll hit the wrong one in here. Aren't you the lucky one? Are you all right, Mr. O'Christ? His aim is as bad as his poker. Buy yourself a drink, young fellow. 
What's the matter? You don't play the game of five aces, do you, Judge? You seem rather out of place in this camp. I wanted to tell you the same thing. <laughs> I was on the point of giving some free advice. You know, the big sister. What sort of advice? Oh, nothing that matters. But this camp's on the boom. It's getting pretty rough. You have to expect that sort of thing. You should be in a town like San Francisco. And then there's the youngster. What luck's got a share in this camp? He's gonna be rich someday. I haven't seen any of the bright yellow metal flowing his way yet. It will. Kentuck and Judge Brant and all the rest of them. They're just drunk with the newness of it all. They'll come down to earth. I've heard you say something like that before. Well, good night. Sleep? Not exactly. I'm moving out tomorrow, David. I got a nice room with one of the girls in the new hotel. Oh. I guess you'll be more comfortable there. It's a nice room. Well, good night. Good night. a new pastry cup at the diggers. Bigger than ever. Well, Sandy, that ought to put you at the top of the list to announce the ship to the bank, eh? Maybe yes, and maybe no. But right now, I wouldn't mind getting back some of the dust you folks took away from me the last time I was down. Well, it's a bit early in the day. What about you? If you insist. I'm thirsty. Step inside, Jess. The drinks are on me. Oh, well, not a bad idea. <laughs> Coming? Go ahead, I'll join you later. Uh -huh. If it wasn't the 27th of August, I'd say it was Easter. Do you really like it? I had a chip from New Orleans. It's the latest thing, right from Paris. You're an extravagant young woman. <laughs> can I help it if I like pretty things? I like pretty things, too. And I can buy so much more than you can. Not for me. Yes? I've got three rooms reserved. I'll be moving my stuff in this afternoon. Perhaps a celebration tonight. Then I'll need a hostess. What do you say? I bet. Oh. How much you got in there? 18 ounces. It'll be weighed. Hey, Tuttle. Will you go away? I'm gonna call you. Sandy, did it ever occur to you that Lucky is entitled to some of that gold? I have three fours. Three eights. Sandy, listen. Will you get out of here, you and that crying bat? Give me that hand, Lust. That brat'll get his when I get good and ready. And don't you horn in on another game of mine, you hear?
you in, Mr. Oakhurst. Oh, young fellow. Miss Elsie's moved. Yes, I know. Yeah, quite a place you have here. It isn't very often Luck and I have any visitors these days. Let me show them to you. He's asleep. Mm. Must be interesting. So interesting, I hardly have time for my studies. <laughs> studies? Blackstone. You're going to be a lawyer, eh? I hope to, in time. Splendid. Someday, I may want you to plead a case for me. I'm afraid that's a long way off. But I'd be proud to do it. Where did this come from? Oh, that's an old cloak that's been laying around here ever since the luck was born. Fine texture. Must have belonged to a lady. I always thought she was a lady. But Kentuck and some of the rest of them, they were sure she was chased out of some other camp. Who? The luck's mother. Isn't he swell? Where is she now? We buried her. Just over the hill. Well, I'll be saying good night, young fellow. Oh, thanks for dropping in on us, Mr. Oakhurst. Good night. Take good care of the little fellow, won't you? I will, Mr. Oakhurst. Trust so, sir. <laughs> it's my turn for revenge. <laughs> I'll hold a place for you at the table, Mr. Oakhurst. And we nursed the baby on donkey's milk. <laughs> Someone's smarter than the donkey thought that one up. That's all he got at first. Yes, I know. The boy told me. Only get those gardens, Dell. They nearly cleaned me this afternoon. Give me another stack. I'll take one. May I have a hand? Why, oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, Sandy, uh, go get you with me. Right. What have you and your friends been doing lately for the baby? Well, now you see, uh, Davy takes care of him pretty well. Hello. Hubert, come fill in a hand. What's here, Brandy? Nothing, thanks. That's getting to be a habit with you. Sit down, Hubert. Gentlemen. This looks like it's going to be a very big night tonight. One for all and all for one. That's my model. Give me a stack. The sky's the limit. Deal them cards. Yes, gentlemen. All right, gentlemen. Give me three.
Oh, Mr. Oakers, the biggest game we've ever had is going on in there. The men that founded this camp's going broke. All they got left is one poke. Well, we'll have to look into that. Yeah. John, watch things like get back. Well, I call you for what I got. Three eights. Well, that cleans me out. Hey, Judge, let's have the rest of that dust we've been keeping. Hold on, Sandy. That's all the dust we got left. Yeah, if you want to gamble that, you can give me mine right now. But you and me's cleaned out. Wait a minute, Sandy. Tuttle, we've got $20,000 in that safe of yours. It looks like I've got to tangle with these gentlemen and get my partners even. All right, Judge. Give me the card, Mr. Dealer, and I'll deal. Pardon me, Judge. But wasn't that the money you were saving for the baby? See here, Mr. Oakhurst. We are all partners. And we win or lose together. Andy. Gentlemen, they're all blue. Well, Judge, it looks as though you've cleaned this out now. Let's split it up right now. Oh, no, Kentucky. This money is going to San Francisco on the stage. Then no evil ideas will tempt us to lose our hard-earned profits. Well, look here, Judge. Aren't you going to save any of that money for luck and the boy? Mr. Oakhurst, we're taking care of luck and the boy. I came in a little late for the game, Judge. I'll play a couple of hands for it. Oh, no, Mr. Oakhurst. You're a little too lucky with cards. I always considered you a very sporting gentleman, Judge. Thank you, Mr. Oakhurst. Look here. I'll cut you once for $10,000. Ten. You're wrong. No, you don't. That money's going to Frisco. And the stage leaves right now. How much we got there in chips? Thirty thousand. We'll, we'll take it in dust, Tuttle. All right, boys. Stage is waiting. Come on. Never saw a run of luck like that in all my life. But you sure did save the day. <laughs> I had a good hand, Sandy. There you are. All right, Sandy. Here's your receipt. Thanks. Hey. Oh, Mr. Tuttle. Don't forget about that $30,000 chip cash in. I'll put that in the bag with the rest of your savings, Judge. Here. Hi, Bottle. What are you shipping, Tuttle? 200 pounds of baggage and $80,000 in gold. There you are. Seems like you fellas in Loring Camp have all the luck. What do you mean, all the luck? Gold was there all the time. We just kept on looking till we found it. Seems to me I once heard a dying woman say her baby would bring us luck. <laughs> you know what's good for you, Star Bottle. You won't let nothing happen to it. There ain't nothing gonna happen to it. Gentlemen, this occasion calls for a meeting at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> what an idea. <laughs> Let's go, partner.
Come. Get out of here. What do you think you're hired for, Starbottle? I had two pokes on that ship. Did you see who done it? Yeah, it was that gambler Oakhurst. I'd know him anywhere. Oakhurst? All right, men. Let's form a posse and go get him. Thank you. 
Smokers. Nice evening, ain't it? I thought I recognized you before. Amazing how slow a mine can work. He shot down Pete Considine in Red Gulch last spring. He was tried and found guilty. Only he got away. Yeah, well, he won't get away this time. Come on. Hello. Hello. I saw your light in the window and thought I'd drop by. How's luck? Oh, he's asleep. Won't you come in? No, I might wake him. David, I'm going to give you some money. I want you to take the child and go to Frisco. You're smart, plenty smart. You could do well there. No. No, thanks. I don't need it, really. No, please. This camp owes luck something, and I think he's going to get it. Someone knocked over the stage tonight. It's too bad. <laughs> you should have heard your friend Sandy scream when he heard he was naked. <laughs> Guess I should have been there. I don't know why he screamed. They all lose more over the poker table every week. Well, good night. Thanks for dropping by. You going over to the trial? What trial? Why, over Tuttle's. You're going to hang that fella Oakhurst higher in a kite. Well, they can't do that. Huh. Well, you see. This is a court, and as the properly appointed judge, I am going to see that dignity is maintained. Huh? Where the way he's crabbing, you think this is a church? Kentuck, I'm appointing you as Mr. Oakhurst's attorney. Me? By the power vested in me. He won't have much chance if I defend him. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got a chance no how. Oakhurst, did you do it, or didn't you do it? Didn't I do what? Did you hold up the stage? Judge, would you have this ignoramus please stop annoying me? That's it, gentlemen of the jury. Do you wish to deliberate here, or shall we retire to the tap room? Well, let's try the tap room. Well, yeah. Let's go to the tap room. Thursday Christmas for us while we deliberate. Judge, judge, wait a minute, no, wait. Davy, this trial is over. But I can at least say something, can I? Go ahead and talk all you want, but I warn you, our minds are made up. As most of you know, I've been studying law in my spare time. If you mean reading, you've done nothing else. Yes, we know, Davy. Let's get this over. But, Mr. Oakhurst, I thought I might represent you. I don't need a lawyer. Is this a prosecution at the hands of justice? Or is it a persecution? This man is entitled to a fair trial without prejudice. Just a minute. I am agreeably surprised to find an eloquent pleader in our midst. But I warn you, Davy, I'll find you for contempt of court if you imply these proceedings are irregular. Or that I lack like the proper vested authority to conduct them. Gentlemen of the jury, you will proceed with your deliberation. You've been a little there. As most of you know, I've been sort of nursemaid to the luck. That's the little fellow you've all seen me around with. But maybe some of you don't remember that Roaring Camp is the luck's godfather. You remember, Sandy, when the luck was born. His mother asked you and the other fellows to be good to him. She said you might bring your luck. Then the woman died. For a while, you and the other fellows couldn't do enough for him. You even called him Thomas Luck. I guess luck was like the nine-day wonder, though. I guess a novelty wears off everything, even a baby. But I can understand that. And when the camp struck it rich, you, Kentuck, and you, Judge, and all the rest, 
I know you were kept pretty busy up at the new diggings, and I could understand that. And you, Judge, you promised to stake out a claim for the luck. Instead, you staked out two for yourself. And none of you remembered a dying woman's request, nor your own promise. If you had gold enough to ship away to the banks of Frisco, if you had more to throw away on poker and these girls... David, there may be a bushel of truth about us all neglecting the luck. And we also know that you've got a sneaking liking for that gambler there. Yeah, we know that. Now you get out of here before we knock the stuffings out of you. I don't know which of you is the bigger fool. You might persuade David to take his baby and get out of town. They're a swell pair, aren't they? Yes, I suppose so. You can congratulate yourself, Elsie. Every woman who ever strung along with me finished up on the short end. Gentlemen, the jury has reached the verdict. Listen, Elsie. Take David and the baby and get out of this camp. Well, so long. So long. There he goes! Where are you going? I'm going away. I'm going with you. But you see, Luck and I, we're not coming back. Neither am I. <laughs> 